streaming live. G'day there, Facebook. Hope you're all doing super, super, super well. Uh, welcome to today's exclusive interview. We've got uh, some amazing information and interview live for you guys today. You are not going to want to miss this. This is going to be an exceptional, exceptional interview. Uh, as usual, myself and Serena are here to serve you guys and help you guys move forward and kick some big goals in 2020. Um, how are you doing today, Serena? I am doing absolutely excellently. I'm very excited to hear about all this because it's not one of my subjects. So I may ask a couple of questions for all us newbies to the whole scene. I'm very excited to learn what it's going to um, show us what's going to happen in the future as well. So glad to have you here, Kerry. Good to have you on, Kerry. <laughs> so uh, to give you a bit of a short intro, uh, Kerry is the founder of the Gold and Alternative Investments Conference and YouTube channel and connects with gold and digital currency experts from across the globe to help people with their investment journey. Uh, you really wanna be part of this one today because we're gonna have some, some killer content. I'm really excited to have you on today. Thanks so much for joining us, Kerry. Great to be here, Jared. Nice to see you and Serena and uh, to everybody out there in Facebook land. I am here to serve you guys and to help you guys in this journey we all call life but you know jared i would like to say one thing right up front and that is i am not a financial advisor so please everybody i do your own research this is my story uh but please don't take this as a uh, personal financial advice that is not what it is it is purely my journey and some some suggestions of what I'm doing, but uh, as far as financial advice, it is not that. Hundred percent. So everything we speak about will be in general in nature today, and uh, it's just purely just from what experience and what we've done, and, and anything we speak about is just purely from that element and our own knowledge. None of it is personal advice today. So thank you so much. And and for those people that may not know who you are or just being introduced to you for the very first time as well, Kerry. Um, can you start by just giving us a little bit of a maybe background on you and, and where you've come from, et cetera? I feel like I'm on The Voice. What's your name and where do you come from? Yeah. <laughs> well, if you've got a, like this voice, I'm happy for you to like sing for us today. Well, you know what? Here's a little known fact. I did release a record many, 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 many moons ago called Best in Me, but you'll probably never find it because <laughs> it was under a oh, the challenge is gone look out oh, oh no you just gave serena a bone now yeah, she's it away. Away. <laughs> it away. It away. anyway anyway um, <laughs> look my background uh pretty simple i i was uh, i was actually born in bangkok thailand because my father was a naval uh, a naval man so we moved around quite a lot as children uh, okay. my first language was thai not english um and we lived in the u.s we lived in australia so i've always been a bit of a nomad most of my life but um, in my late 20s, I got married uh, and we moved to the UK. Uh, and sadly, you know, that didn't, uh, that didn't survive. I, I ended up being a single mum in my, gosh, mid 30s. <clears throat> um, as a result of that, you know, I didn't, I, I left the family home and I was renting a place, but I knew I needed, or I thought I wanted to buy a place that I, my son and I could live in but I didn't have that much behind me. And so I started making it a game. And this was back in uh, 1998. And so I was going around, I didn't really understand the real estate market. I didn't really understand too much about investing, but I was feeding my mind. And instead of watching television, I would, I would read about successful investors. And so I would go around and if a house was on the market for 350,000 pounds, I'd say, 250. If it was on for 400, I'd say 300. And because I was getting knocked back time and time again, um, I literally wasn't really thinking about it. I was just making stupid offers until one day an agent rang up and said, they've accepted your offer. And I didn't know what to do. I thought, oh my God, what am I going to do? So I rang friends and family and, you know, I, I had a little bit in the bank, but not, not enough. Somehow I managed to sort of push it all together by literally begging no, no stealing. Um, what I didn't realize at the time is I could have turned to the real estate agency and said, I've changed my mind. But because I was so naive, I went ahead with it. It was the best thing I ever did. Now, why was that? 
two reasons, Jared. One, yes. I bought a house that I couldn't really afford, but I knew that it had extra bedrooms. And so I figured that I would rent two of those rooms out, if not three bedrooms. Okay. And that would help pay the mortgage. Okay. So whereas other people would buy something and oh no, we can't have strangers in the house. I had I had I had I was I was a landlord at my in my first investment, which really helped me to get on the property ladder. Okay. Wonderful, wonderful. It's like, uh, I, I love, like, there were some keys here, right, that you, you said here before. So you were just putting offers in and they weren't getting accepted. How many How many offers did you put forward, like, out of curiosity? Can you remember? Yeah, over, over 20. Over probably, 20. Probably, okay. probably closer to 30. Yeah. So, like, if someone said to you, like, the house was on the market for 400, you'd offer them 300. If it was on the market for... 350 you'd offer them 250 or whatever right and you did that 20 times so you got like 19 people saying no to you over 20 times probably closer to 30 closer to 30 so you got a lot more no's than yes but then somebody called you back and said yes yeah and and because it because it became because at that stage it was a game i wasn't expecting anyone to say yes so when they did i almost had a heart attack <laughs> awesome awesome and, and I guess the second key that you said there as well was um, you could have easily turned back to the real estate agent and said, no, I'm not interested anymore. I'm not, not uh, you know, situations changed or whatever, but you found a way to be able to make it happen. Well, I think there were two things. One, it was my naivety in not really realizing that I could say no. I literally was that naive. I was just like, well, I've made an offer now. I've, I've, I've got to go forward with it. So that was naivety. Mm -hmm. uh, number one, and um, a, 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 but but looking back now, so and at the time it was, you know, it was the big scary monster because it was, how am I going to afford this? And then I realised, well, there's extra bedrooms, so I can I can rent those out. So there's tick, there's a little bit box there. But mm -hmm. if if I'd had all the knowledge at that stage, I probably would have said, oh no, I can't do it. It's it's too big of a hairy monster. Uh, I'll just go back and stay in my comfortable bit. Mm. without taking that big risk mm. so the naivety was was something that actually helped me in the long run and I, I i look back now and i smile but and i remind myself of that often when i start getting uh i guess concerned worried about goodness me i'm i'm, I'm putting an investment into so what if it doesn't work what if something goes wrong well what if something goes right so for me, it's uh, it's realizing that sometimes the big scary thing today is not that scary tomorrow. But at least, at least I was doing something. I was taking action. Hundred percent. So like, uh, and, and some more knowledge bombs here. If you guys are here live, are, are liking these this type of knowledge we're getting right now? Like it, we're extracting out what like the success habits here, right? As well. So it's like you. Uh, I guess I guess there was fear there around what if this doesn't work but you said to yourself you know what if it does right so for, for like how how did you sort of like that that like how important is the mindset side to investing right because well, i mean yeah know, jared it's uh, i think mindset in, and in fact it's the it's the thing i study the most on and um, I have a coaching business, um, shout out to my coaching business. Um, and, and one of the things that I focus on a lot with my coaching clients is mindset. Um, there's, there's a wonderful guy out there and, and here's, here's the first uh, nugget, gold nugget for you guys, because I love gold, as you know, I'm a gold nerd. And we're gonna talk about gold in a little while, but- There's, there's a lot of gold nuggets already coming from today, right? Yeah, uh, but, but <laughs> um, I totally lost my train of thought. Your gold nugget you're about to give up this guy. Yeah, I know. Oh, yeah, I know what it was. Mindset, mindset, mindset. Yeah. So everything that I say to people at the moment is is how you speak. Like I was talking, um, I'm I'm working with a startup at the moment. This is a complete, it's another business that I'm getting involved in, which is really, really exciting in the digital space. Mm. Um, but the 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 owner of this business turned around and said, what I'm trying to do is, and I said, right, first up, never say the word try. You either do or you don't do, but don't try. 
And, and so I often say to people, there's two things. There's, there's your mindset or mind power. Yes. Because here's the thing. We have two brains and most people don't realize that we have a subconscious brain and a conscious brain. And your subconscious brain is the tricky one. The subconscious brain is the one that says you're not good enough. Who do you think you are in doing that? And so what I try, try, there you go. See, I, I, no, but I stop myself all the time, Serena. I'm here and we talk about it. Uh, because it's, an because it's really important to understand that what you say, thoughts are things and thoughts become reality. Mm. So be very careful of what you say to yourself and what you think to yourself. And so to go back to your original thing, yeah, I, there's, a, there's a wonderful guy by the name John Kehoe, K-E-H-O-E, -E, John Kehoe. Now, John's a wonderful man. He's now in his 70s, but he spent three years in the world, like literally in a, in a, in a hut in the middle of nowhere. And he spent three years working on how the mind works and the power of manifestation. So, you know, it, it's the age old thing. If you think you can, you can. If you think you can't, you can't. Both of you are right. But most people think they can't, so they never will. Mm. True. <clears throat> I think that's why they have, um, you know, in especially with what's happening in the world at the moment, the, the difference between what they call sheep and leaders or people who think and people who just want to follow and listen to certain things so the same thing if you think you can you can and they're the people who are out there trying to get more be more know more educate more and then the other people just sit back and let people tell them what to do and just believe it and that's it it's similar well i think serena that's a, it's a, it's a good point but i th and i think that in today's pandemic world if you like uh, people have got a little bit complacent because they have, you know, a lot of us have got a security blanket in, in all this government stimulus. And so where, where people are saying, well, the government's going to pay me, so I'll sit home and watch net, binge on Netflix. And I'm like, are you bloody crazy? Use that as a buffer and yeah. spend this time feeding your mind or looking at opportunities. Because guess what? Out of every crisis comes masses of opportunities. You've just got to be quick enough on your feet to stop being a, a small business owner and start becoming an entrepreneur and start going out there and doing rather than rather than shooting mm. yeah. yeah yeah like and i i'm glad you're like speaking about all of this today as well because like the mind the, the mind is so much more powerful than all of us put out and the people that have gone oh yeah i've got the security blanket security right the um you know safe zone essentially which, you know, there isn't a lot that comes out of the safe zone. It just, it's just like it's just what your mind thinks it is, right? However, there's going to be a time where all of this is going to be cut off, right? And you're either going to be further ahead or you're going to be where you are or even potentially for some people, they're going to be further behind where they were as well, especially for business, right? And it's a very uh, level playing field right now for all businesses, right? I'm, I'm seeing at the moment. Like it, like yeah. I, 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 I sorry, Jared, but I, I, I would say it's definitely not a level playing field because, yeah. you know, if you were the CEO of an airline business, uh, you, you got a lot of a lot of challenges on your hand. <clears throat> but if you're with Atlas Atlassian or Zoom or, <clears throat> excuse me, I'll just drink from my copper water bottle. Um, <laughs> you know. It's. I, I think it's very different depending on where you sit, but that's where you've got to be out there and yeah. and not looking with the blinkers on, but looking looking with a wide-eyed lens and saying, mm. "All right, what does this new world look like, and where are the opportunities?" Yeah, and look for all airlines; they're going to be in the same same spot, right? And like from industry to industry, not from like industry specific, we're talking more so now, right? Like everybody's in the same boat as such. Yeah. Um, but it, I guess it's what we do from here that will, you know, uh, determine where we're going to be after all of this is finished as well. And I mean, coming, coming back to like, I guess the mind side and everything too, that we're speaking about here as well, like um, with, with like your experience and everything too, like, what do you what do you think's been the most important facets of successful business owners or successful startups? Do you think that this element that we've just spoken about is 
is the difference between someone that's successful and not and not as successful as such or what would you what would you think would be some of the success traits around that like successful businesses to non-successful businesses uh well i think that um my business coach jt would always say know your numbers you know, if you don't, if you're, if you're doing a business or, you know, and I, again, in my, with my coaching clients, some of the things I'll say to them are, you know, they'll come to me and they'll say, hey, they've either got an idea, but I actually bring them back and I say, okay, well, let's, let's start with numbers. How much do you have in your superannuation? And I don't know, uh, do you guys have people from all over the world? Because yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, so, so, so how much do you have in your retirement fund? Here in Australia, it's called a superannuation fund. Do you know 90% of the people I speak to can't give me that number? Now, if you don't know the number, and that's an investment, that's part of your future investment. And the lack of knowledge of their superannuation, their retirement plan is stunning to me. Mm. So, you know, if you, if you start from what do you own and how can you manage that, that's what you have to start with. You yes. know, don't even start with business. I mean, that's, you know, obviously, if you're 12, you don't have a, a, a retirement superannuation plan, but from day dot. And the other thing that I get people to do is I say, for the next two weeks, I want you to write down every single penny that you spend and where you spend it. Because I can guarantee that we can save you 20% of whatever it is you're spending on right now. Because money for some people, it's like water. It just trickles away and they don't know where it's gone. Mm. And you, you believe that's like the building blocks, like that sort of like, yeah, yeah, great. Because I think for a lot of people, like money's a subject that brings up a lot of like stuff, right? You know, like that internal stuff. The thought of, you know, like um, uh, for a lot of business owners, we talk on, you know, okay, like for, especially for a lot of coaches, right? Like when they're selling like sort of $1,000 products, $1,500 products, looking at packaging your expertise to something that's like worth 10, 15, $20,000, for example, right? That's like that money side and that feeling on the inside is like, you know, am I worth it? Um, can I really do that? Like all this type of stuff around money. But even when it comes to looking at the bank accounts and seeing where the money actually goes and, and so on as well, it's just a real... I don't know, like it's, it, I'm sure you could talk a lot more on this as well, but it's, yeah, it's like, I think that, I, I th here's, here's an interesting story. So um, I, I sold my principal place of residence uh, in January, just before COVID struck. Lucky me. <laughs> Once again. <laughs> lucky me. Um, and, you know, so which, which has put me in a very good position. So right now I'm, I'm renting and um, the, the agent, sent me an email yesterday saying, well, we're going to put you on a new system and, and here it is, and you're going to pay your rent. And, and, and in the very fine print, it said, and each time you pay, it'll be a $1.95 charge. I that, saw that. I, I was that, like, wow. That is not a lot of money. You know, I am financially fine, but that's why I'm here on this with talking to you guys, because I want to share what I've been through to help other people to get to where I am. But here's the thing. Most people would say, Kez, it's $1.95. Really? Well, no, that's, that's, that's not it. It's the, it's not just about the money, but you know what? I, I, I look at every, you know, pennies. I don't care because I watch where my money goes <clears throat> and I'm not prepared to pay $1.95 for some, for me to pay a rent. So it's interesting. Lots of other people would just go, oh, well, that's just the way it is. And I say, no, $1.95 is as important as $1.95 million. And if you're paying rent weekly on that as well, right, that's probably what works out to about 100 bucks a year. Yeah, yeah. Which, you know, like invested into whatever it is that you like to invest in, which we'll talk, I guess, a little bit about later on it too. However, it adds up. It all adds up over time. Yeah. 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 Wonderful. I love that. And, and look like, um, I guess the whole money game and everything right that, like that as well, it's to, to make more is to add more value or make yourself more valuable. I like to talk a lot on, um, however, 
yeah, I, I love this whole conversation where it's going. And for, for you guys here that are, are tuning in live, right? Like this is your opportunity to be able to ask questions of Kerry as well. And I know Serena's got some questions now too. I gotta fight so sometimes to get a word in, so I'll just give you get the attention before. <laughs> Serena, are you able to do a favour for me? Because, you know, I do a Facebook Live at 2.30 every day. I don't know whether this will work or not. Is is there a way that you can post on my Facebook saying Kerry's live on this link? I already have. Oh, for now. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I've already done it. I, I, I put it on. I, I, you can go and put it on a friend's timeline. So hopefully it'll post it direct to the page. I'll have a look in a second. but Or whether you have to approve it to go. But I think it pretty much goes straight to the page anyway. So people should be aware of it. Uh, um, and guys, like all, all of you that are here live as well, um, share this out so more people can get this type of information as well. Because, like, you know, Kerry, Kerry's here today. Wealth and wealth of knowledge around business investments and, and and things like that from her personal experience, right? And you know, she's come here today out of the goodness of her heart as well to sh openly share all this information to you all. And she's doing some really big stuff that we're going to be talking about um, and, and sort of segueing this conversation across to around her um, conferences that she runs, right? Um, <laughs> which uh, there's some exciting stuff there as well that we're going to talk about too, which I know you guys will find very valuable. Um, just various different opportunities, things like that that she works on. And I know you've got some cool little things to show us as well on your side. Um, I tried convincing her a few things on on this stuff that she was going to show us. Um, but, you know, like she said, but I mean, do it. Well, I was going to say from, because I was trying to say something before and see Jared just took over again completely. And I'm like, ah, I'm going to forget what I wanted to ask. What do you want to ask? Ask away. Let's I, do this. I forget. No, I wanted to say, you said from the goodness of her heart. I was going to say from the goldness of her heart, um, you know, because she's the gold lady. That's <laughs> but, just um, golden. Just touching back on when you were saying, you know, about the 195, because I saw that. So I, you know, I'm sort of belong to a lot of groups, watching what's going on. I've never been a big number person. JT picked that up with me, you know, straight from, you know, the very beginning, but I've been working on becoming a numbers person. Jared's very number, so I watch a lot of what he says. But, you know, it wasn't even that. There's a lot of talk going around at the moment about the cashless society. So businesses are now starting to put out there, sorry, we don't take cash. Some people are, oh, that's okay, I only use a card anyway, but I don't think they look deep, deep enough as to how that can affect, you know, people or different things in, you know, the future. Um, and that was, I think, was part of what I saw when you posted about the rent. It was like, oh, hello, here we go. Not only are they now stopping people from paying cash for rent or whatever, they're making you go through an app, but then they're also going to charge a fee. And that fee was even whether you use a debit card and that debit card is actually your own money. So why should they be charging on top of your own money? So, and then I started hearing that the banks were doing this sort of deliberately about the no cash. So at some stage, mm -hmm. I can't remember the right wording, but you might understand what I'm saying, that it's going to crash with the banks and the banks therefore have all your money and then you can't do anything about it and you lose all your money anyway. And that's where it starts to lead into gold as well. Well, Serena, one of the things I always say to people <coughs> is, look, I, I think there's a lot of scaremongering going on out there. And um, I personally do like cash and I like cash because I don't, need you know everyone to know exactly where I spend every penny of my money I understand that it, you know it's we're probably going to go to a, a digital society don't like it so if you're out there and you want to use cash and they say we don't take it guess what I do when they say we don't take cash I say okay see you later and as I go to walk out the door 90% of the time they say oh I've just spoken to my manager we can take cash funny about that so yeah. the more people that just turn around and say, well, you haven't got my business unless I can use cash, the, the longer we'll have cash. So mm -hmm. look, I don't think it's going to happen tomorrow, but, you know, I, I don't know if we want to share my presentation, but I do say, you know, it's happened in the past that, you know, if your money, all your money is in a bank, then the banks do have a little bit of, um, but they, they have a bit of control over it. But having said that, uh, banks here in Australia are, are, are very, very safe and you've got the $250,000 bank guarantee, 
Now, if you're listening to Robert Kiyosaki, he's very wary of having all your money in the banks. That's an opinion. We've all got opinions. Look, if we if I had a crystal ball, I would be a multi gazillionaire. But you know, it, we don't well, have crystal balls. Yeah, well. Kerry, that, that comes into like with the gold, because that's where I don't, you, you know, we've had a few chats before and I'm thinking, so, okay, so they say, you know, put your money into gold as well. And there is a lot of talk about that out there at the moment. Gold and silver, it's running rampant through a lot of different things, especially with the behind the scenes stuff going on. Mm -hmm. And then I sort of think, well, how do I do that? I have no idea. What do I, I pay a thousand dollars to get an ounce of gold or, you know, has gold risen so much that it's going to be out of my affordable range now i'm just coming from a layman's term here how can you you know give information to us that tells us if we did want to go into gold and i don't know if this is your powerpoint what do we do how do we do it how do we understand it you know how does it make sense to people like me who are not numbers sure okay so uh do we want to go into the gold story yeah let's let's yep. let's talk about that because this is something that everybody should get some you should be aware of Yes, okay. to learn about. Let's do it. So, if you if you go back in uh, into history, the the way back in time, the Roman times, uh, money as it was then was in ex in exchange for goods was gold or silver. Okay, mm. and uh, over time, history will show. And there's a there's a great series that you can watch on um, uh, Mike Maloney's Hidden Secrets of Money, which will take you through the history of money. Now, the difference that most people don't understand is that gold and silver are money. Everything else is credit. And by, by, the, by everything else, I mean all paper money, so fiat currency, which really is just I'm having faith in the government uh, saying that this $20 is worth $20, that, that, is, that is called currency. It's not money, okay? And so... Right now, we have got two things happening. We have artificially low interest rates and we have something called QE. Now, QE is just a fancy name. It's called quantitative easing. It's a fancy name for printing money. Now, of course, the more money, I shouldn't say money, Mike Maloney would shoot me for that. The more currency you print into the system and blow the system up, the less purchasing you power, power you have because the less value that currency has. Mm. But you can't print gold and you can't print silver. There's only so much in the world. And in order to extract gold or silver, you have to have a certain amount of productivity. You can't just print it out of thin air. So there is a value associated with money. Now, Serena, you asked a really good question, which is, you know, first of all, why should I own it? Many people say to me, uh, they talk about the price of gold. And I say to them, you don't, don't, you shouldn't ask me about the price of gold because the price of gold actually remains the same. It's the purchasing power of your dollars. So a great example is if you go onto my, uh, my YouTube channel, the Gold and Alternative Investments channel. So go on there and by the way, um, heartless plug here, please subscribe and share because I do share a lot of great information on there. But there's a there's an interview on there that you should all watch. And it's by a guy called E.B. Tucker. E for Edward, B for Bob, E.B. Tucker. Now, E.B. Uh, is a director of Metalla uh, Royalty and Streaming. It's, it's a company that's listed um, on the exchange. He also has just written a book called why gold? Why now? Now that's a beginner's guide to what gold is all about. Okay. But one of the things that EB shows us on the interview I did with him is a, a number of years ago, if you had said, I'd like to buy an ounce of gold, and he's got a very, it's, it's a hundred one dollar US bills. Okay. About this wide. That would have bought you an ounce of gold all those years ago. Today, if you want to buy an ounce of gold and he picks up another bunch of $1 bills and they're about, you, you can't see me, but I'll do it, huge. Mm -hmm. 
Wow. So what people have to understand, it's got the, the, the actual, and here we go. The gold coin, and this is actually not a pure gold coin, I'll be very honest with you, because if somebody watches really closely, but that's the size of a real gold coin. Nothing in that has changed. That is still a gold coin. The only thing that has changed is that a hundred years ago, the amount of paper money I would have to, to use to purchase that would have been a lot less than it is today. Because mm. right now that is 1,800 US dollars, which is about two and a half thousand Australian dollars to buy one ounce of gold. All right. Uh, this is, just while we, and this is quite small, you can see. That is a gram of gold. That's just a gram. It's, it's quite tiny. So if you put it up against my ears, it's tiny. So a gram of gold, and I wrote the, I got the prices today because I think it's important. So a gram of gold is, is 83 Australian dollars. So it's tiny, very light. It's $83. Wow. The one ounce gold coin is about two and a half thousand. And the one kilo bar, and here's a heartless plug for, no, it's not heartless, I shouldn't say heartless, what is it? Something plug for ABC, that's ABC Bullion. It's a one kilo bar from ABC Bullion. And that one kilo bar is worth $83,000. That's Australian dollars. If you've got people watching in the US, it's about yeah. uh, 58,000 US. Wow. But but here's the thing, that 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 gold will still remain gold. But the devaluation of the Australian dollar, the the Bolivar, the Rial, the Yuan, the New Zealand dollar, the devaluation of the paper money is why I believe that gold, because it cannot be destructed, it cannot be printed is going to become, it's going to protect your wealth. And what I say to people often is always hedge and diversify. You know, don't go and sell your house and your children and go all in gold. Do people, do people sell their children though? Like I've been trying for years. Yes. <laughs> yes, they do. That is part of the problem going on in the world at the moment. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, but, but, and just while we're, we're on little props here, I mean, that is, uh, that's, that's a kilo of silver. What's that worth? A uh, kilo of silver is about $600. Now, here's the difference. You'll see that the silver width uh -huh. is twice the width of gold. Okay, you see that? Yeah, yet it's nowhere near as uh, as much in terms of Correct. price. So, so it's the same size in the block, but it's half the width. Interesting. But the gold is heavier than the silver because gold is one of the heaviest metals. The biggest challenge for people, though, is, and, and there was a, a, a recent case in China where a jewellery manufacturer got loans of something like $4.9 billion against some bullion, but it was found that the bullion was fake. So a word to the wise, be very careful where you buy your gold from. Don't go and buy it from the, the chap online that says cheap gold for sale now. You must buy it from a reputable bullion dealer. And, you know, the, I can't say that, you know, people will say, oh, but this guy's selling it cheaper. Yeah, that's probably because inside it's lead. It's just got a very thin covering of gold. So mm. people have been fooled in the past. So be very careful. So but to go back to what you originally said, Serena, which is about you don't really understand gold. Gold is not an in investment. It's a hedge against the rest of the world getting into serious financial difficulties. And I feel right now, I feel it in my waters that we are in serious difficulties because even before the coronavirus began and put us even into even more deep water, 
we were already economically in a slowdown. We were due a recession. This is, it's all a cycle. And people just need to understand there are cycles in real estate, there are cycles in finance, there's cycles with everything. And if you understand that right now, we're in a cycle, we are, in my opinion, and again, I am not a financial advisor, it's just I've done a lot of reading and I, you know, when everyone else is watching TV, I'm listening to some of the brightest brains that I know. People like Ray Dalio, who's a ran one of the biggest hedge funds in the world. And Ray mm. Dalio says that, you know, he, he believes that people ha should have 10% of their worth in physical gold. But a lot of people don't understand but that right now we have artificially low interest rates. So let's put it another way, Serena. Right now, most people are used to having their money in the bank. Okay? Yes. Now, if inflation is running at, let's just say, 2% inflation, which means cost of goods going up. So if inflation is running at 2% and the bank is giving you zero or even in Europe negative, and by the way, negative interest rates, in my opinion, will be coming here, then every year you are losing money, currency, I should say. Your, the, your purchasing power is becoming less. And so I look at it and I say, well, with artificially low interest rates, with the banks printing money, with everybody getting handouts, we are in unprecedented times where, and people are going to be losing jobs. I don't know where it's going to take me, but when I see that they're, the, economically we are in very challenging waters, then gold is my little safe harbor. <clears throat> but it's not where I put all my money. Mm. But you see, the, the biggest issue is many people don't know what to do with their money. They don't even, and I would say to everybody listening now, go and understand velocity of money. Because velocity of money means when money continually exchanges hands, it creates an energy and it creates <coughs> an economy. But right now, everybody's fearful. Everybody's locked down. People are spending. Mm. How do you put it in gold? Like, I mean, I see you handling all that gold there, and I hope you've got security guards around your house at the moment. But <laughs> we won't tell them your address. But um, how do you, how, you know, like you say, put it in gold? So just put it in gold and bury it under your house, or is there a bank that's gold? Or okay. so, so look, you could bury it uh, in, uh, in under your house, and people have done that. Um, I, actually, I actually know of somebody who who uses a uh, very. This is insane. But this particular person is insane. They actually use a much larger block of gold, like the one I showed you, and they use it as a doorstop. Why? <laughs> I've heard of that. Let's say I've heard of people doing that. Because because the, the they say it's it's in front of their face, so they won't know that it's of any value. Whereas if I hide it under my mattress or I hide it in in a cupboard, they'll find it and they'll steal it. Whereas if it's right in front of it, but that's yeah. not what I suggest. Here's the thing. Right now, we live in a, in a technological age. And a lot of people understand, the well, actually, some people understand the share market. And there is something called an ETF, which is an exchange traded fund. And there's one for gold. It's called GLD. I don't suggest you do it. Because in my opinion, that's just, that is swapping one form of paper for another form of paper loosely linked to gold, but it's still paper. Mm. So in other words, if everybody at once turned around and said, for example, to the bank, I like every single person that had money in the bank said, I want my money back today. There's not enough cash in the banks to give everyone back their money. Why? Because of every dollar that you give to into your bank account, it's called fractional reserve banking. They lend it out 10 times. They only have to have 10% balance of all the money that they lend out, right? The same applies to gold ETFs. So if every shareholder in a gold ETF said, I'm going to take my money all at the same time, there's not enough. There is not enough gold in the world to match all the gold ETFs. So it's a, for my opinion, that's fraught with danger.
So when everyone does pull it out, that's when it goes like that, right? Well, there won't be enough. Yeah. It's simply not enough. It's it's not that the price will go down. It's I don't the price will go up because there's not enough of it. Okay. <laughs> so so I th you know, and in fact the price of gold has hit not quite an all-time high, but it's it's hit over 1800 US this week. So, you know, the but that's not why people should buy gold. They should not buy gold on the price it is today, yesterday, or tomorrow. They should buy gold for generational wealth. They should buy gold for when, you know, everything goes into the poo basket and they go, oh my gosh, what can I do? At least my gold has kept value against mm. the paper. Mm. And, and and that's, you know, I, I think one of the things, you know, for, for me, for example, um, I started with very little, but I, you know, I bought a principal place of, of residence. I bought a place for my son and I to live. I then had people sharing the rooms and that's how I managed to pay the mortgage. <clears throat> and that was in England. And when I left England to come back to Australia in 2003, I actually tried to sell the place. I couldn't, but I had to get back to Australia because my son was getting into school, et cetera. So I, I had to rent because I couldn't, you know, again, it's like the universe is always looking after me going, you idiot, don't sell it, keep it. Um, so I came back to Australia having rented it and then realized I could leverage. So I put a bigger mortgage on England, took a mortgage out on a place in Australia using the equity from England. And that's how I started getting my real estate journey going. So, you know, a lot of people say to me, you know, money makes money. Well, courage, courage also makes money. And mm -hmm. to be, and I'm not saying, you know, be courageous and stupid, I'm saying, you know, listen to people that are much smarter than you, that understand the economy and hedge and diversify, hedge and diversify. Say it all the time because we are in cyclical markets. And right now, I've, I've, I've said this before to people that, you know, people ask me about the share market. Do I have shares? Yes, I do. The majority of my shares are uh you know, my whole my whole super fund is in shares. I'm not suggesting anyone else should do it. I have a self-managed super fund because I do my research and I understand that when I buy a share, I'm buying a share in a company that I believe when I buy those shares is undervalued. And look, a great example, um, Warren Buffett once said he hates gold. He has no need for gold. Uh, it's a, it's a, it doesn't give me interest and it's just a rock in the ground. Well, that's all well and good for you to say, Mr. Buffett, you don't need gold. You have, but, but for us mere mortals, it is good for us to have exposure to something which in my opinion, and, and if, if we decide to do the, there is a slide in my presentation where I can show you the price of gold in the last 20 years as against the currency and how it's held its value. Yes, show us, please show us. Share it with us, yes. All right, well, let's just go quickly. Can you see my, uh, can, what the heck? Can you see my screen? Break gotcha. the chains. Gotcha. I'm gonna, well, you know, you're, you, you, I've, I've introduced myself now. That was, that was a few years ago when I had very short hair. <laughs> I am an entrepreneur. I'm not a small business owner. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm looking always for opportunities. Uh, I, I do have a coaching business. I help people with businesses and I help people with their mindset because more often than not, it's the mindset and it's what you tell yourself. I mean, my son is a, is, is a, a is a, a, an entrepreneur and I tell you, you cannot break his mindset. He knows exactly what he wants. And he tells me how success, I have no doubt that he's going to be successful because he has absolutely not one iota of doubt that he will be successful. I am a specialist with alternative investments because I do look at the digital, uh, digital currencies and I do look at other ways of investing money. I've just invested in an aged care um, company because I believe that the baby boomers are getting older and that's an opportunity. I have, I have real estate, uh, all, all of it here in Australia. Uh, I love my gold and I love my gold equities. I run the conference and I also have the YouTube channel. So 
most people probably don't know that the dollar is no longer backed by gold. Because back in 1971, President Richard Nixon decided to temporarily suspend the US dollar off the gold standard. Now, the gold standard meant that the US currency had to be backed by gold. So as many dollars that were out there, that was the value of the gold that was out there. But in 1971, Richard Nixon temporarily suspended the US dollar off the gold standard. Where are we now? 2020. It is still 51 years later, temporarily suspended. But it is now backed by bad car loans, bad home loans, distressed assets, and derivatives. And by derivatives, I mean things that I don't even understand and the people that make these derivatives up don't understand. So <laughs> loans upon loans upon loans and the spider web keeps getting bigger and deeper. And for me, that's a concern because whether you realize it or not, your bank can freeze your accounts and they have done in Greece and Cyprus. In fact, they froze the accounts and once they unfroze the accounts, those people that had over 200,000 euros, the lovely government said, well, we'll take 10% of your hard earned savings. Think it can't happen here? Well, I would just be cautious. So what is your currency really worth right now? Here's gold's performance since the year 2001. And I've put it in various currencies from US dollar to the pound. I've included obviously the Aussie dollar, Canadian, Japanese, etc. So if you look from 2001 right up until today, and let's look at it in Australian dollar terms, there have only been three years where gold has had a loss. But if you had held it over that time, your average return against paper money would have been 9.5%. Mm. So protecting your wealth is important. And I believe that's what gold does. So I think that this chart, Jared and Serena, is probably one of the important charts for everybody to know and to realize is you don't chase the price of gold on a day-to-day -day basis. You look at it as the opportunity for you to protect your wealth over the long term. Does that make sense? It does, definitely. So I'm just curious too about, you know, we talk about the cycle. I think it's a 10-year cycle um, from memory. So looking at that there from when you started, that's like nearly a 20-year um two cycle period there and the, the the ones that are out like in the red are in different stages through there but very similar to the same time frame except for 2013 when they were all when gold hit a big big challenge yeah but it's still 2003 2013 2004 yep. 2014 sort of similar time frame yeah. to the cycle um yeah i wouldn't read too much into that i i look at more the long term but, you know, yeah, you are right to a certain extent. But, you know, what's the point of all? What is the point of all this? As I said yeah. before, it's to build generational wealth. You don't want the, the challenge I have with paper money right now, and especially right now, is that it is um, it, governments are just, you know, the US government is printing it into oblivion. And by the way, every single fiat currency, every single fiat currency, um, if you could look at the entirety of monetary history in one snapshot, one glaring fact would stick out and you would see that gold, silver have frequently served as monetary standards, right? Mm -hmm. But that fiat currency systems have all eventually failed. And for the first time in history, in recorded history, all monetary systems in the world right now are fiat based. <clears throat> now, that's never happened before. And that means there's no playbook to tell us what could happen. And it tells me that this is a massive experiment. We are living in an unprecedented time in history, which means that the risks to the monetary system are high. 
And that means monetary uh, robbery continues because we're living in a fiat world where paper dollars have become money. And that's because the government says they're money. So and that be- money can be diluted at will. Mm. So, so is this the same as the uh, like cryptocurrencies and all that type of stuff as well? Is that like I know fiat's like something that's not backed by gold, right? Yep. Um, but, so but that would the, take fiat your- money, the paper money right now, Jared, can be printed and printed and printed. But yeah. the cryptocurrency is on the blockchain. For example, Bitcoin. And look, I'll get into that. Why don't I get into some of the different wealth vehicles? Should I just mm-hmm. quickly go through that? Yeah, of course. Okay. Look. All I say to people, is, and I'll run through this quickly so I can go back and answer some questions. You've got to know your pros and cons of different wealth vehicles. And what I said before, hedge and diversification is really, really important. And there are different ways. You know, I, I have people say to me, well, I don't have any money. Well, go and find somebody that does. And, and why don't you say, and let's just take real estate as an example. I don't have any money to invest in real estate. Well, go and find a community of people and say, I have the time, you've got the money, let's do a joint venture. You know, there's 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 always an, a, an excuse as to why you can't do something, but there are always ways that you can do it. Now, mm. the cons with real estate is it is illiquid. So you get you can have capital gains, but you can have ga- capital losses as well. It's also cyclical, um, but the, the, the way you make money is when you buy real estate, not when you sell it. Because I know that for a fact, because I've made all the mistakes. I've made the rookie mistakes, so you don't have to. Uh, But real estate over time is a good investment, in my opinion. Now, the stock market is very liquid. You can get in and out of the stock market very quickly. But again, what you want to do is you want to look at buy shares you believe will will weather this, especially this market. This market is very volatile. The VIX, which is the uh, the volatility index, is currently above 20, which means there's an incredible amount of volatility in the market. And so if you use the VIX as a tool and you see that volatility is high, you want to buy good undervalued companies. You don't want to buy dodgy companies. And what you want to do is you want to have a look at the long term share price and say, okay. Is this, is this share price looking strong? What does this company do? Oh, it's an airline industry. Maybe right now that's not a good stock to buy. Oh, what's this one? It's in the homemaking industry or it's in, uh, it's in the food industry. Well, everybody still has to eat. Maybe that's a good stock to look at. But you know, in anything, do your own research. But the stock market, you you know, you can invest in the stock market with as little as $500. In real estate, you need a much larger uh, uh, deposit to invest. But as I said, get creative. There's always ways that you can invest. My favorite, of course, would obviously be gold and silver. And I showed you the gold and the silver. Um, Again, I'll go back to how you can invest in gold and silver. But You know, here in Australia, we've got places like uh, uh, the Perth Mint, uh, which is a very reputable uh, uh, dealer, a refiner. It's the it's Australia's oldest deal uh, refining company. And the best place in Australia as well, of course. Yes, because, of course, Jared. Hey, Jared, have you ever gone and seen the gold pour at the Perth Mint? I have been into Perth Mint. I haven't seen the gold pour or anything that I would love to. Go. They do the gold pour. I don't know what it's like with COVID now, but. They normally do it every single day. I think it's around four o'clock. You should go and watch the gold pour. It's really cool. Yeah, okay. I'd love to. Sounds amazing. You're in Perth. You might as well. And, you know, go go into the Perth Mint. Get some of their, their information. Um, and, you know, you don't have to physically, and to answer your question from before, Serena, you don't actually physically have to hold the gold in your hand. You can buy what's called pool allocated, <clears throat> which is part of their depository, and you can buy gold and it's stored at the Perth Mint. Ah. So you don't fi- have to physically own the gold, all right? So you can you can call up and you can say, I'd like to buy gold. And look, they'll help you with the process as well. But there's another one, and I'll just quickly run to the end of this. I'll, I'll go into digital in a minute, but let me just uh, finish off this and then we can have a chat. I always say that hope is not a strategy, okay? 
Oh, I hope I get rich one day. Oh, I hope I have some gold one day. Oh, I wish I could have a house. Oh, I wish I had a good job. You know, hoping and wishing doesn't work. Here's my game plan. My game plan, and I, I, I read this every single day, that is, is ultimately not to have debt, to fully own a number of investment properties. I'm on the path to have diversified income streams, and that's more than one to own physical gold and silver, to have physical cash in my hand, independent of the banks. I am not 100 independent of the banks at the moment, but the banks are becoming less and less um, relevant these days. So that's my very short uh, presentation where I want to just share with you, you know, break the chains, get out of slave labor and, and, and funnel your own path to independence. So I'm just going to exit that and stop because then I can see you guys again. Yay! While you're Good. doing that, I just wanted to quickly say two years ago um, when I was first travelling around America, I travelled around with an account called eGold and the, the money that we had in that account, that was my first sort of um, uh, dealing with something like that, fluctuated based on the... Um, amount of what gold was at that stage and that all just sort of disappeared and you know I don't even know what happened to it or whatnot but I know that you know we were doing everything digital and we had this e-gold account and that e-gold account had a, a dollar figure in it and one day it could be this and the next day it could be that and it was all based around gold it was called e-gold. Haven't heard of it Serena but um I'm sure if you did a Google search on it, maybe it's changed its name or something, but um, uh, <clears throat> I can find out a little bit more about that if you like. I, th I thought I had some money still in it, so maybe it's worth a lot more now <laughs> if it's gold. But, yeah, it just sort of just disappeared off the face of the earth, so I don't know. I don't know enough to be able to advise you on that one at all. Um, there is a company now called Send Gold, S-E-N-D Gold, sendgold.com, yep. and that's really just a gold bank. And uh, people, people say, oh, but what if you go broke? Well, go and look again on my YouTube channel, Golden Alternative Investments channel, because I've interviewed the CEO of SendGold. Her name is Jodie Stanton. And we talk about, you know, how secure is it? Well, it's insured by Lloyds. Uh, the gold is in safes controlled by Brinks. And it is audited by Bureau Veritas. So it has a lot of... There's a lot more checks and balances around things these days than there were in the past. But here's the thing. There is risk with everything that you do, apart from unless you hold it in your hand, right, everything has a risk. And that's why I say to people, you must do your own due diligence. But most people will say it's just too risky, so I'll do nothing. Yeah. But don't say oh, you haven't been warned. <laughs> it's um it's it's a very uh interesting space i think to, like where where the world's at right now it is very interesting and that, yes there is plenty of opportunity and everything and i know like for me like we I, I hedge a lot of what i do through through our business right but like you know i've got a lot of knowledge around real estate and all this type of stuff i own real estate i've got investment properties etc however like this gold side of things to me is is not something I fully understand. I own gold, right? Like I own gold things. That are no, you gold. own gold jewelry. That's not an investment it's unless you not the it same. Down. It's not the same. No. Different. Gosh, and here I was thinking I've got some gold necklaces I've had for years. I thought, oh, well, at least I've got some gold. Well, the the, the challenge, <clears throat> the challenge with most uh, gold jewelry is that the markup is in how they make the gold jewelry. It's not in the gold itself. Okay. So, so whatever you say, you bought a piece of gold jewelry for two hundred. The value of the gold would probably be about eighty dollars. Wow! Right. Okay. See, this is what I mean. Like, this isn't uh, an area of expertise of mine. Yeah. You think this is this is what I think, right? When I think gold, I think okay, I've got a gold necklace. I've got a gold ring that I had since I was thirteen. This sort of stuff, right? Um, so it's not an expertise of mine. Then it's like, um, you know, this whole digital currency side of things. I learned, I learned many years ago through some, some mistakes in investments is that if I don't understand something fully before I go into it, I won't invest in it now. And like, well, 
that can be a challenge as well, Jared, because I say to people, you know, when you buy a car, do you know how many stitches are on the front uh, seat before you buy the car? No, you and don't. Do, do you know exactly how much plastic is in that car? No, no. you don't. There's no. a certain amount that you do need to understand, of course. Mm -hmm. But I, I know that, you know, analysis by paralysis or paralysis of analysis is, is going to stop so many people from doing anything. Yeah. And you know what? You'll make mistakes along the way, but, you know, at least if you're making mistakes, you're learning and you're growing. Mm. I don't mm. think anyone's going to make a mistake um, buying some gold and holding it for the long term. They will yeah. make mistakes if they buy gold jewelry and think that that's an investment. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so like gold, 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 for example, that would be an investment of keep long term that, that I would, would consider, especially after talking to you about it all the conversations and so on we've had around all of this has been incredibly incredible that like you can't i can't even put a value on the amount of com amount of conversations we've had around this um so gold as a and silver as an investment like from speaking to you i feel like that's a really good solid investment for creating long-term wealth because a lot of my mentors what they've said is they've said you know um uh, create wealth by keeping it long term as well like keeping it long term i forget the terminology that we use that was used around it's like create wealth and keep it or something along those lines um so i think gold is a very good aspect of that real estate i like i'm in real estate as well however it's still um you know where you've got plenty of knowledge and so on it's good to have people like yourself that has like in-depth knowledge around different things while we're you know we're not giving um you know advice today everything is general and everything i think we've still got to understand from my experience to a certain extent some sort of due diligence type process around something to physically understand it before you invest and so on which i'm sure you could agree with to a certain extent without being the over analysis paralysis type of thing so like uh, let's let's start like speak a little bit if you don't mind like we sort of touch a little bit on the the digital uh, currency side of things as well and yep. I know there was one that we spoke about before which is coin yep right which is uh, being bought out by so, so the thing I would say about coin coin is not an investment yeah. coin is like barter card it's it's a it's a digital currency so to me it's a platform where mm. if somebody else has coin you can quickly exchange coin for you know I want to buy some meat from you and I'm going to use the coin that's in my wallet. So it's a very early, it's a very early stage digital currency. It mm. seems, it seems quite valid, I guess. Mm. Um, I'm not an expert in coin at the moment. I do have coin uh, yeah. because to me, it's just, it was a, it was another way for me to buy goods and services. Uh, but when you, when, when you look at, the fiat currency where the government can keep printing and printing and printing digital currency. For example, Bitcoin is limited to 20, 21 million Bitcoins, okay. you know, so you can't print more Bitcoins. Does it have challenges? Absolutely. Um, you know, it, it was what it was. The first one came out in 2011. Um, I was told about it when it was about, or oh, I think it was about 12 cents. And I said, Oh, well, what a ridiculous uh, concept that is. <laughs> That was a silly, silly uh, idea, which is why quite often I'll go. But you know, <clears throat> I um, I have a a, a few um, digital currencies, including Bitcoin and Ethereum, and a couple of others. But here's the thing, you know, there's a lot of stuff out there, and there's a lot of them that are absolutely not a good idea to put your money in. What mm. I would suggest people do is go and um, become a member of Alex Saunders um, platform, which is called Nuggets News. Now, Alex has got a plethora of information on his website. A lot of it's free and you can understand a lot more about the cryptocurrency world by going in and doing some of his um, some of his lessons on nuggetsnews.com.au. Mm, okay, great. That's awesome. That's awesome. So uh, yeah, make sure you guys go there. Um, in, in sort of summary, I guess, to sort of finish up today as well, I want to talk, I guess, a little bit more on your YouTube channel, right? Because, I mean, I could probably extend this whole, in, like myself and Sarita, we could extend this interview to like 
three or four hours or like almost a whole day we could talk about it because my mind's gone rampant at the moment. I've got 10 million questions I want to ask you. Um, I'm going to back on because I, I'm going to have to be going soon, but um, yeah. Yeah. I'm happy to come back another time, but... Um, I reckon we should that's definitely because there's like 10 million questions here. Um, and if everybody wants that, like just comment into the comments if you feel like there's some more stuff we could touch on on this because you're probably getting a million questions as well but to finish like let's just talk about your youtube so you've got what's the name of your youtube channel the gold and alternative investment show okay. so just, and he's already in the, in the comments as well i put it in there uh yeah. serena you're a bloody legend um, and your facebook thank you yeah i do a facebook live every day but i don't accept everybody as friends because i'm i'm just swamped so um, please don't think I'm being rude if I don't accept you. It's just I'm swamped. Um, yeah, the Golden Alternative Investment Show is, look, the com obviously because of coronavirus, there will be no gold conference this year. Um, and I have doubts even that next year there will be one. I've, I've got a feeling that this could be going on a little longer than we thought. So, you know, I'm, I'm all about serving and giving back to the community. So I, I interview interesting people about um, gold, the economy, what's happening, what they should be looking out for. So there's a lot of good stuff on there. I've got Jim Rickards, um, Brent Johnson, uh, Jordan Alicio from the Perth Mints on there. Um, so there's a lot of good value. And all I ask people to do is hit the subscribe button and the like button so that I can get YouTube to put me higher up on the rankings. That's all I ask of you. I don't ask for money. I just ask, hit the subscribe button and share it with your community i would really appreciate that yeah put the facebook gold geo i see up as well still over it see <laughs> why serena's the best oh, you. good <laughs> so so guys go across and check out that channel on youtube uh 110 because there's only so much we can get through today in a very short period of time we tried to jam as much as we could into one hour and we've already gone over like we said, we said to carry half an hour and it's extended to an hour. And then now we're at like an hour and nine minutes. So it's so like- just one question, can you sneak one question in just quickly? Cherry's sure. asked a question. What would you, just, to, just as you know, your own personal opinion, not advice. What would you suggest for a person who is 88 and solvent? Risk appetite is very conservative. 88 years old? Yes, and he's American. And solvent? And solvent. Insolvent or solvent? It's solvent. He's solvent. Okay. Well, again, you know, it's not financial advice because um, what's his name? Uh, well, it's Sigma. It's okay. Sigma. It's Sigma. Mr. Sigma, I don't know your financial circumstances. Um, I do know. <clears throat> and at eight, 88 years old, congratulations, sir. That's awesome. Um, I, 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 I don't it's know. Cherry's your... dad. You know Cherry? Cherry Sigma? It's her dad. No, I don't. The cyber security lady. Probably know her, sorry. But anyway, <laughs> um, if you want to create generational wealth for your children and grandchildren, then I would suggest 10% into physical gold um, because, and, and because that carrying on down the generations, if any of them get into trouble down the line, it's, it, it's you know, if, if and when they get into trouble, it's, it's, a, it's a good hedge. 100%. There you go, Jerry. Cool. So thank you so much for, for uh, jumping on today, Kerry. We really, really appreciate coming on and sharing all of this um, fantastic information today around gold and business. And like we just, we touched on so much. Uh, everyone, all of you guys here that are on live, you've really got to go over and watch this video a few times because there is a lot of information here and you want to be just writing like crazy all the way through it because um, all of the gold nuggets uh, that we've got today is not about just giving you information for now, but it's also giving you information that can feed you for years as well uh, beyond this too. So thank you so much for tuning in. And for those, those people here at live, uh, today, how how can they reach out to you if they have further questions or if they want to attend the conference or go on a sorry wait list for the conference? No doubt, right? Because you know it could be next year, it could be the year after. 
Um, how could they reach out to you? How can they get some more information, uh, et cetera? Um, I'm, <clears throat> I'm pretty sure on my, uh, if you go to goldevent.com.au, you can subscribe there. Beautiful, beautiful. Goldevent.com.au. And, and there's, also, there's also an ebook that you can download off goldevent.com.au, um, all about gold. It's, look, it's, it's very basic. Um, I would suggest they get E.B. Tucker's book, Why Gold, Why Now? Because that's a great comprehensive look into the gold industry and why, why to invest in physical gold. Uh, we, we haven't even touched on gold equities. That's a, whole, that's a whole other. We'll save that one for next time. We can't give away everything all in one here. <laughs> you can give away that gold nugget, I think. That would be nice. I got to hear. Yeah, well, that's not going to happen. <laughs> back to the one? It's got to go back. It's going back in 10 minutes. Okay. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you so much for tuning in. We really appreciate it. And, and coming, I uh, really appreciate you being on today as well, Kerry. And um, we're going to wrap this one up, everybody as well. So uh, go across to the website that uh, I'm sure Serena's already put in, goldevent.com.au. Download that guide as well. Um, download that little ebook on there as well. Give you a heap more information. Put you on the wait list for the next events. Go across and follow the YouTube channel um, as well. There's plenty of gold nuggets on that uh, channel there. Not physical gold nuggets, but I'm sure they'll be able to help you get more gold nuggets in your own life as well. Um, pardon the pun. So, <laughs> and we're going to wrap this one up for today. Thank you so much for tuning in, everybody. Yay! Really you all. <laughs> See you later. Bye. Bye, y'all. <laughs>